everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be drawing D.Va from Overwatch using only my computer's mouse. Um, I found this extremely difficult, so um, first I'd just like to commend those of you who do digital art with the computer mouse regularly. Um, I honestly don't know how you guys do it. I've seen some really beautiful art made with the mouse, and I'm just very inspired um, by you guys because that is very difficult for me. Um, uh, especially during the sketch stage, I couldn't really get a handle on um, a comfortable way to draw. And this is kind of like a double challenge for me because I'm actually left-handed, so um, I only use my mouse with my right hand, so I did it with my off hand as well as not using the tool that I'm usually used to. Um, just to be clear, this is not like an instructional video. Like I said, I'm pretty bad at this. This is more like a challenge video, um, just so you guys can enjoy uh, watching me struggle. <laughs> um, if I was to do an instructional mouse video, I would want to consult with um, someone who does that a lot more um, than I do because uh, it, I'm just such a lay person when it comes to drawing with the mouse. Um, and yeah, I wanted to draw D.Va because she's my favorite and I'm sad that she got nerfed in Overwatch and I'm sorry I'm constantly bringing up Overwatch if you don't like Overwatch, but I'm just having such withdrawals because I can't play it while I'm at school. Um, so I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, just a real quick thing, uh, it's always good to bring in reference when you're doing fan art of character. Even even though I know D.Va pretty well, her costume is pretty complicated. It has lots of little panels and stuff, so um, it really helped out just to bring in that picture of her. Though it's not great because then you can look at this beautifully rendered 3D model of D.Va and compare it to my <laughs> embarrassing sketch, but you know, um, it's still very helpful. Um, so. I would say the most difficult part of this process was definitely the inking. Um, uh, one of the things about working with a mouse is you have to use a much smaller size of brush because you can't really use any pen pressure and any pen, pre pen pressure that you want to um, uh, simulate you have to go back in with an eraser. Um, I actually took some advice from, from you guys. Um, you had been talking about it in the uh, inking do this not that video about how to simulate um, pen pressure because people were asking in the comments how to, to show pen pressure if they only have a mouse. Um, so I'd also like to appreciate you guys for helping each other out in the comments. That's really sweet and I'm glad that you guys are um, being kind and helping out and it even helped out me. So um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing to sort of uh, cut into these very janky um, inking lines to try to make them look a little bit better um, and maybe even look like they had pen pressure applied. Um, my hands are wobbly even with a really good tablet, so uh, these lines are pretty bad, uh, especially because Photoshop doesn't really have any kind of stabilizer. Um, I know that uh, Psy and Flash, or I guess it's called Animate now, they both have um, ways to smooth the lines sort of in the computer, um, but Photoshop doesn't really have that. So um, you can see every little wobble of, of my, my aching wrist. Um, so that's not so good. Uh, what I was most surprised by though is once you put the color in, it actually doesn't look quite as bad. Um, that's another thing, even with normal inking uh, with the tablet or outside of the computer, uh, you might find that it looks a little bit messed up when you're in the inking stage, but don't give up on it still try to put in color and shading and you might be surprised at how good it looks at the end as long as you uh, keep your spirits up and don't give up if you have a mistake or two. Or a hundred, like you're seeing here. The other thing I would mention if um, drawing with a mouse is something you do regularly is to make sure to stretch out your wrists and hands and take regular breaks because um, even just from a little bit of this type of drawing I noticed um, I was experiencing some pretty strong uh, wrist and hand strain that I usually only get with um, many hours on the tablet. So do be careful. Um, one of the major things uh, that I would want you know younger me to know and also young artists to know is that it's really important to take hand, care of your hands and wrists. Um, there is nothing more important in your art career than your ability to continue drawing so please don't beat yourself up too much. Um, you will eventually start to see um, 
problems arise if you are drawing too long and you're in pain but you keep drawing it's not good for you so please take care of yourselves guys and um, yeah especially if you're using a mouse it's not uh, very natural for your hand so uh, be very careful and listen to your listen to your wrists if they're complaining then just take a little break um, the other thing I'm doing to sort of fake in the idea of pen pressure is I'm constantly changing the uh, t the pen tool size or the brush size so that um, at least we're getting different variants in the thickness of the line. Really it's, it's best to make sure that details are fading back a little bit and looking more delicate than the outlines because that just helps your eyes sort of know where to look and it makes your characters look less messy so that's a good thing to do. Um, and. Uh, I'm also blocking in these strong black shadows, um, just to push the back part of her hair behind her shoulders visually. Um, I'm trying to add my little dashy hairlines, but they look disastrous. I'm leaving them in anyway, but um, yeah, if this, was, if this was trying to be professional work, I'd probably leave them out just because they really didn't turn out right. Um, from far away, it looks pretty good, but when you get closer, it's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit messed up. Um, so the coloring part was quite easy because I had a reference picture right there so I could just literally use the eyedropper tool and sample all the colors that I needed. Um, and I was surprised to see how um, intensely saturated that pink is. And I don't notice because it's such a small part of her design, uh, sort of just the piping and her, the stuff on her cheeks, but it is a super strong pink. Um, it's even stronger than the pink of her mech. Uh, so that's something interesting just design wise. Um, if you're trying to learn about color theory, you should, um, and you have Photoshop, you should sample in pictures that you like and just um, eyedropper tool pieces out of it and take a look at what the colors look like on their own. Because oftentimes you will find that they actually look a little bit different when they're um, on their own because we see all colors in relationship to the colors around them. So putting highly saturated colors next to each other will make them look less saturated than they are and um, vice versa, if everything is desaturated, then certain colors will look super bright even though in reality they're quite grayed out um, because that's just how our eyes work and it's kind of interesting. So I'm just using the paint bucket tool to really quickly um, patch in all of those colors and she's starting to look a lot more like Diva, which is great. Um, I got some skin color in her eye, but we can just really quickly fix that. <laughs> This took me 40 minutes in real time, and I sped it up uh, four times so that it would only take 10. Um, and yeah, I think this would have probably taken half the time if I was not using the mouse. Um, but I'm actually surprised at how usable it is once you get used to it. Um, I'm still very impressed by mouse artists, though. I really uh, would not be able to pull off a lot of drawing if that was the only tool I had. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see that people will make art no matter what, pretty much. Um, they will make art with whatever they have, um, and that's really cool. So now I'm just shading with a um, sort of peachy color, um, using a multiply layer on top, and that makes it pretty easy. I'm not having to change colors. You might notice I'm being really sloppy on the outsides. Um, but that's because that's easy to fix um, and you'll see in a minute the trick I use to completely get rid of any areas where I went um, over the lines. Uh, I, I actually recommend even doing this um, when you're not limited, e even if you're using a tablet. Um, this is kind of a fun trick because you know constantly worrying about the lines or having to select everything is kind of frustrating and you really don't need to because there's a lot of cool Photoshop shortcuts that can make things easier if you have clean line art. So basically, yeah, I just was able to instantly get rid of it by um, hiding the shade layer, selecting around her form, then turning the shade layer back on and just deleting everything that was selected. So that was any part that went over the outside silhouette of her body. Um, and I just used the line selector to make these little, little triangle shines. I'm really liking geometric shines lately. They look, um, I think they look cute. They're kind of weird, but um, yeah. And there you have it. This is my little portrait of Diva drawn entirely with a Logitech mouse. And um, yeah, <laughs> uh, hopefully it's not too 
cringy for you mouse artists to watch. Um, I did try my best, I promise. Um, this is a really good time to uh, follow my Twitch because later this month, um, probably in the next couple of days, there will be the very first live stream. Um, so if you are interested in that, please check the description and click on my Twitch. I actually might uh, put it into the end card this time. Uh, we'll see about that, uh, just so you, it's easier to click. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching my video, and uh, have a great week. A big thank you to my patrons. A reminder, if you pick the $10 or more tier, um, you can have me personally thank you at the end of my videos uh, with whatever name you would like. So in that vein, uh, thank you to Le Ble Ble Ble, Den, Brock, Juan Alvarez, Chartype, Adrian Delport, Adrian Morales, at Live Likes to Draw, Paynamel, Kate Meekins, Caitlin Foss, JTXL, and Muffins McGee.